will be uh, good. Okay. Okay, let's start again. So I try to, I will try to explain you what a research proposal is based on my experience. And I think that will be very helpful for you to decide your research proposals and also proposal. Okay. So let me start with this, this funny uh, card. So uh, someone tries to get his story. So, right? Uh, you feel that you find that this is topic, right? You are very happy. Uh, okay, I got this. And you just very, you are very, you just send it to your advisor and advisor say that, oh, sorry, it's my, not my area or topic. It, it, it could not be studied, okay? So these kind of actually things happen that uh, it could damage your uh, motivation. It could be demotivating for you to uh, uh, study academic careers, study your academic careers. However, you need to realize that you know, that there's a big picture here. Why is it uh, so hard for students to understand that? Because uh, maybe you are missing some important points. And let me tell you a little bit about this. Because uh, academic career, I also did not realize that. By the time uh, I learned this, and I want to share it with you today. So the big picture here, uh, why we are doing a scientific research, okay? How is it difference between the, uh, uh, okay? A scientific research, we need to answer the following questions. First of all, what you have to study, okay? Your scope and your research questions. And then, how do you intend to do this methodology, which is more, which is very important, your methodology, because the methodology actually decides what's the science and what's the If you do not follow this methodological uh, uh, rules, okay, your study is uh, not valuable, okay? This is why uh, you need to invest in your skills, uh, why do you choose that topic? Why it is significant? Okay, what is will contribute to the uh, knowledge in the uh, science, in the social science, in management knowledge? What you will contribute with that topic? You need to decide that. And then, it's important how do you want to study that uh, topic? Because if you choose a topic which is very hard to apply, which is very hard to call. Like which requires years of, for example, collection data, it may not be feasible. Then where you will do that study? I mean, from whom? From which environment uh, you collect the data? Okay. So uh, today, first question only. I want to uh, highlight that because uh, our lectures, in our lecture, I also. Uh, put more emphasis on this. Your how do you develop a research question and how do you decide a uh, study topic? Okay, and today I will tell you uh, what is a research question. How can you do that? However, a research process is something bigger. Is that graphic? First of all, you need to identify the research problem, then review the literature and specify a research purpose. These three levels are actually required the first three steps. Identify your research problem, revealing literature, and specifying research purpose. Today, I'm going to talk about them more. And the mood applies uh, when you uh, apply that, when you try to write your thesis, or uh, you will collect data, analyze them, and report another story. And this is the, in the second phase, this. This methodology matters, okay? But in the first, you need to understand the academic mentality, how academicians are looking actually into the research, right? So that you can uh, have a good, you can have a good, uh, high quality uh, paper in your head. So your purpose, okay, uh, could be a research project. 
right? And help your research project. Have your research project contribute to the existing research. And you need to build discipline specific research in an acceptable time frame. You need to show that you understand the fields. You understand the, let's say, strategic management fields. You understand the problems. You understand academic discussions, argumentations in there. And you need to dispose of that. It contributes somehow to that. Okay, let's move on. Before that, I want to mention also that there are two types of research you can use. Okay. One of is qualitative research, the other one is quantitative research. Generally, quantitative research are based on studies and uh, hypothesis testing, okay? And it's more common that generally are used in uh, in our actually management and the statistical methods are used more, but qualitative, qualitative studies are could also be used. I mean you can make interviews, you can make Make content analysis. These are all available as you will learn them in your methodology courses. And please put emphasis on that. Uh, learning methodology. So, what is a research question? Let's start with that. Okay. Actually, this is something uh, most of our friends, most of our students have some. This is in defining the research questions, okay? Because not every question is a scientific question. Okay? For example, you may wonder the, uh, something about uh, going on the management field, okay? It could be a good question, right? But how uh, that you can make sure that it's a research, it's a scientific research, right? Uh, uh, you wonder. Uh, how much money uh, Turkish average on average Turkish films win in 2020? Okay, how, what kind of question do you think is that? Is it a scientific question or regular question? I mean, on average, how much money a Turkish company uh, earned last year? What do you think? I think that could be a normal question. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a normal question, right? I mean, you just, it's a descriptive question. You want to learn about something about that company, companies, how much they earn in 2020, okay? And you ask the question, you collect the data, and you have an answer, okay? So generally, uh, the questions coming to your minds, students' minds are, uh, have a descriptive purposes like that, okay? For example, uh, in an industry, I mean, you ask some questions, or, okay, you make some research, you uh, look, seek for some answers, but they are descriptive questions, descriptive answers, okay? And they are not related with a theoretical background. This is important. I mean, if you if you cannot relate this question with a theoretic, theoretical background, I mean, it could not be acceptable as a scientific research question. This is important. So, uh, if it is so, how can we can how can we uh, find theoretical questions, right? Uh, the answer actually uh, says that you need to read a lot of uh, articles, a lot of uh, journal articles before forming your research question. At least a hundred of articles, okay, before deciding a research question, you need to read. At least you need to skim through just the article because. First of all, you need to realize that there are some theoretical discussions in the field, right? Uh, for example, Porter is saying that industry is important, industry matters for uh, the company's success, right? But other uh, authors say that, okay, industry may matter, yes, but is it really so? Is it really that important? Or companies' internal conditions matter more? Which one is true, for example? So it's a theoretical discussion in the field, you see. If you are aware of this theoretical discussion, maybe you create a new research question contributing that debate. If it is so, it is acceptable as a research question. Of it, but if it is not, if you did not read a lot of uh, articles, if you 
if you are not aware of the field, okay, you come up with some questions, but your advisor tells you, okay, how can how can you relate to, to that with the literature? You need to relate this question with the literature. And you try to relate this question with the literature, but you can't do it. So it becomes more complex and complex. So what I what I suggest to you is to uh, to read a lot, to give dedicate your time to understand the basic discussions, okay, in the uh, fields. You need to be aware of this, and to aware of the, to be aware of this, you need to know how to make a literature review, how to find good articles, how to read them. Let's move on that. Oops. So uh, I actually named eight uh, points here. Uh, which you can form your research question, okay? It's eight steps. And the first step, okay, selecting your topic. Okay, this, uh, this is the initial step. And in that uh, phase, you need to decide what you want to study, okay? Then you need to make an article research based on this. Actually, last week I tried to uh, quickly introduce you how, to, how can you use Web of Science and how can you reach the SSCI journals, high quality journals. And then you need to read their abstracts, select the articles that you like, okay? You need to understand their discussions, their arguments, their hypotheses, their claims, etc. After you finish these first four uh, steps, you need to rethink your topic, because in the first step, you don't you didn't know nothing, yes? you just have an idea about that topic. Which fields? Okay, the strategic management. I don't. I want to study strategic management. Okay, and I want to, let's say, uh, study strategic management and innovation. Okay, okay, this is good. This is a good start. However, after you read all of this, you need to rethink your topic, and you need to now be more focused. Okay, innovation, but what? What kind of innovation, right? Uh, strategic management, but what kind of uh, theoretical argumentations exist in innovation? the relation between innovation and strategic management. You need to be aware of this. Then you rethink your topic. After you rethink your topic, you need to make further article research. It is not uh, it's not uh, enough to make just one article research at the beginning of your selection of your topic and then uh, leaving everything out. No, you need to make further articles, reach further read, uh, readings, further readings, a lot of readings, okay? Then you decide your topic and then move to your literature review. Okay. I will go to one by one each of them, but an important mistake that most of our friends do, okay, according to my thesis, is that you just select your topic and you start to make your literature. Okay. And literature review by literature review, you understand that most of you, of course, understand that. Okay, I just find an article, I make it summary, I list their summaries together. Okay, it's not like that, I mean, uh, because sometimes you, you make an unrelated article and sometimes you change your topic, okay? Uh, and sometimes you don't even, um, they can't even find some uh, good support from the, their argument, a good support from the literature review, okay? So, uh, I suggest you guys, uh, one by one, please uh, put some efforts to do this to uh, uh, make your research questions more major. Okay, let's go one by one. So, selecting your, your topic first, we are management and organization uh, students, we are making our uh, studies on that. So, you can select in uh, very a huge range of topics from organizational theory, right? Structure contingency theory, population ecology theory, agency theory, new institutional theory, or you can select some organizational behavior uh, topic like uh, job satisfaction, job engagement, right? Uh, or you can select strategic management topics or HRM topics, human resource management topics. So whatever you can select, I mean, you, you need to decide something at the first. and. Uh, you should remember that each of these subfields require different expertise levels. So uh, I suggest you to decide these topics with your advisor, okay? Because your advisor may be 
uh, have an expertise on some of these topics and he may suggest you, okay, for example, I, I work on new institutional theory, you, I suggest you to work on that too, okay? He may say that to you, so it will be better for you. Or uh, he may say you, okay, I am good at strategic management, so let's start, let's start with strategic management. You know? Because uh, the advisor also should have an expertise on that uh, subfields, okay? And you can select from your lectures the topics that we talk about in our lectures, right? Your OB course, your OT course, your strategic management course, maybe something that you are interested with, right? I mean, something that, has, that is related to your uh, proficiency or you just you like that topic. And importantly, I, as I said, discuss it with your advisor. Okay, this is the first step. Generally, our students have a belief that when they decide that topic, uh, it is over for them, so they started, they started to work on that and everything will be okay. However, it's not like that because uh, if you just, for example, select the topic and then try to establish all of this on that, your advisor most probably say that, okay, where is the theoretical background here? Where is the theoretical discussions here, right? To eliminate that risk, you need to make the first article research. I actually introduced you how to look to web of science. Please take it seriously, okay? Please read high quality articles to reach high quality research because there are many articles in the field which are garbage, which are valueless. If you read them, uh, they may mislead you, okay? Uh, you may not uh, be aware of the current discussions of your topic if you just read low quality articles. This is why you need to use the of science. This is why you need to uh, read SSEI articles, okay? These articles uh, actually could give you good ideas, which is very important. I mean, for example, if sometimes you read some article uh, in its future implications part, there are some suggestions for you, okay? If you can find this, which is very good, if you can uh, find something like that, you can, you have a support from the literature, okay? When you go to advisor, okay, dear professor, Ojam, I found an article which is a high quality article, let's say in strategic management journal, and the uh, authors of that article are suggesting to make further research in this area, and I like this area, I want to contribute to knowledge by studying that. That will make your lives very easy, guys, okay? This is very important. This is why you need to make a good article research. Generally, our students uh, do their research on Google Scholar. They find some uh, local articles which are very bad quality, okay? Uh, which are not proven scientifically because a quality article means that their methodology, okay? Methodology and their theoretical contributions are controlled by uh, some referees, some other professors who have expertise in the field. So when they approve that, okay, you can trust the knowledge here. I mean, when you read an article, high quality article, you can trust the knowledge there. But if you read an article uh, which is not approved by these good journals, good referee system, most probably they may mislead you, okay? Probably maybe they may contribute to you, okay? They, they could be true, but their discussions are uh, low quality and that would not be helpful for you. Are we clear so far? Guys? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Le ask me anything if you uh, want, okay? So, uh, how how should you read the articles, okay? This is, this is an important thing as well. You don't need to read all of the articles fully. I mean, when I say, for example, you need to read at least 100 articles, at least 100 articles. Maybe you, you feel that, oh, Hojam, how can we do that? I mean, we don't have time. It's a very hard thing to do. However, actually, you don't. I mean, you just first take a look at their topics, take a look at their abstracts, if they are relevant to you, if, if they are, uh, if their topic, if their argumentation is relevant to your ideas, right? If you like it, Go in the detailed reading, just keep it away. I mean, um, 
this is important because we, we call it skimming the article. Uh, we call it like that. And uh, I suggest you while reading your articles, take notes. Open a Word document, take a note, even if it's a very unlaced article for you, if you can find it in there. And if you may think that I can use it in the future, just note it down, okay? Then the uh, important effort that you put, if you uh, note them down, for you. What then? When you find that, when you find good uh, topics that you like, okay, try to find their conceptual models. Try to find their frameworks, their hypotheses. Try to understand their uh, academic contributions, scientific contributions, their arguments, their discussions, and their results. And please look at their future research suggestions, which is a very good source for new ideas that you can work on. Because sometimes some big authors, big professors, very famous professors, say that, for example, okay, this is the field, this is the discussion topic. Uh, the field needs additional information on these new topics. Topic A, topic B, topic C. When you find that topic, you can find your research question. Okay, okay. which will be very good for you, very relaxed for you. When you go to your advisor like that. Hojan, I found the research question in one of the terms. Okay. So I want to study that topic. Your advisor most probably say, okay, that will be good. So you have a literature background, theoretical background, and you have support from uh, good articles. This is important. Let me show you what I I mean perceptual model, conceptual framework, arguments, hypothesis, claims. Okay. This is an example uh, from an article. It's actually giving uh, a model for customer satisfaction in airport industry. Okay, uh, and look for the graphics like that while you are reading. If you like the topic, if you like the article, look at look at the topics like that, uh, graphics like that. Okay, why I am saying that? Because it's the summary of a framework. Okay, each of the arrow is an hypothesis. For example, layout accessibility is an arrow here, one, and it goes to customer satisfaction. This actually says us a layout accessibility has a positive influence on customer satisfaction. It's a hypothesis, right? And as similar to for all of we call them, we call these uh, things in the circles as variables. Okay. So each variable's impact on other for that, and each of them are hypotheses, as you see. So if you can find something in an article, you may uh, test a similar thing in your thesis, similar thing in your study, okay? You need to uh, want to make surveys if you want to go quantitative. Okay? Probably you will do it quantitatively because in management and organizational fields, uh, maybe 80%, 90%, of the thesis is actually based on this uh, using this quantitative methodology. Like that. Okay, so the important thing here, you like the topic, you want to put the framework a lot. We call this flat the conceptual framework. But the second question, which is important, you need to be able to make measure each item here, each variable. You need to be able to measure them. You need to turn them into to make a, a comparison, to make a, your statistical analysis. So how can you do that? Okay. Also, it's a good uh, hint for you at the end of the articles. In some articles, at the end of the article, they give you their survey questions. These are are the survey questions they applied in this article, for example. I copied it from at the end of the article. You can see layout accessibility. How can I measure that? They give you the questions here. The facility layout makes it easy to get the kind of airport service you want. And the uh, respondents give an answer to that, right? And they understand, let's say, 100 customers, and they come up with some solutions. Why it is important? Why? using uh, this kind of framework, this kind of surveys is important. Uh, if <coughs> this 
survey is applied beforehand in other studies that these surveys, these model, mo models are reliable. These statistically reliable. Okay. If you, for example, if you uh, try to draw this actual framework yourself, okay, out of zero, so you need to prove uh, your model is reliable. And it's a very hard job to do for this level or, or at least for the master level, okay? In the maybe PhD level, you can uh, try to create your, your framework yourself. Such efforts, okay? And many of our students actually get into that mistake. They come with come up with a model. I ask them, for example, okay, come from, what are your hypotheses? They draw your model, but they draw them themselves. I mean, they don't have any support from you. They just uh, write listed variables, make some errors. Okay, Hojam, I want to measure the impact of layout accessibility on customer satisfaction. And I'm asking the question then, okay, where did you find this? Okay, how can you measure these items? Uh, they said that, Hojam, I can write some questions to measure that. And it's not happening like that, okay? These questions, uh, variables uh, are uh, measured by some questions, and these questions are uh, must be statistically tested. Okay, am I clear about that? I mean, I, can you understand me here? Because it's a very important topic. If you uh, can find the questions in the literature, in the studies, you can reuse them by just making some small statistical factor to uh, build a model from zero. You need to make external design statistical things you will learn, but it's very hard job to do. Okay, you need to make pre tests. You need to you need to make piloting. You need to test your variables, test your model, and it's very hard for you to manage in your master thesis time. So I suggest you look up for papers, okay, and make sure that these articles have the questions as well. Generally, in the appendix, they give you the question or even if they don't give the questions, you can email and you can ask them kindly. Dear author, I want to use the same model that you use. Can provide me, provide me with the questions, okay? Are we clear on this? Yes. Hmm? Yes? This is important, guys, because... Uh, yes, TJ, do you want to ask something? No, Professor. Ah, okay, because when I am advising my students on their thesis, this is something I uh, have most have the most difficulty. I mean, they have good topics, they have made good article research, they find something, but they cannot find good proper models. They just ask me to Hojam, can I write the questionnaire myself? Can I write the conceptual framework myself? I mean, it's all, of course, it's possible to write a, a conceptual model from zero, but it's very hard, guys, okay? So my suggestions for you to that, I mean, uh, neither my expertise or your expertise, it could not be enough for you to write it from zero, okay? So one of my suggestions is please find something which is available, which is used before, which is used in good articles so that you can support yourself. For example, in your... Uh, when you are, while you are defending, while you'll be defending your, defending your thesis, theses, for example, you can say that, okay, professors, I found this model in one of the top journals, right? And they applied it. They applied it in the United States. They applied it in UK. They applied, applied it in India, China, and they, they say that it's a reliable model. And I also test this. I, I am using their question. I didn't make them up myself. Okay. This is very important. I suggest you must. Why? Why you are reading your articles? Look graphs like that. If you like the topic, look the questions like that and use them. Uh, yes, my tip is here. If you can find a framework with questionnaire, you can reapply this in your. It will be very practical for you because pre-studied models are statistically proven, statistically reliable. 
you search for these kind of models while you are searching your research question. Please, please, please. OK. In your proposal, for example, if you say that, Hojam, I found this model in this article and I want to apply it in my country's conditions in Turkey. It's a good theoretical contribution. Everyone that and it is enough for master degree thesis. But we all make this research. We all make this readings and you need to rethink your topic. OK, because you don't need to. You must not insist on your original idea. Our students are thinking that their original ideas are so big, that's so very good that they don't want to get away from that. They don't want to leave that idea. OK, Bojam, I love this topic. I want to study this topic, but I am asking, OK, where is the conceptual model here? Where are your questions? Where are your th theoretical backgrounds? But Hojam, I don't want to change it. I like it very much. I mean, don't insist that, OK? Because. Uh, as you see, when you have. When you increase your knowledge, when you read more, actually your thinking, your uh, topic will change. In every so iteration is a must, change is a must, OK? And uh, sometimes there are some concerns of students say that, Hojam, I want to do something that is not done before. OK. Uh, I'm asking the question, OK, where is the theoretical background of it? I mean, in the literature, can you find similar studies? I'm asking my question with my students, for example. They say, Hojam, it's not studied. It has not studied uh, before. I, I will be the first person to study. Our students think that it's a good thing because they think that when they will be the first person to study that topic, it is a good contribution to the in reality, it's not. Okay? If no one has studied that topic before, most probably uh, you have a bad idea. Okay, or a good idea, you will have uh, very big troubles to write down your thesis. So I suggest you uh, don't insist the original ideas. Change your ideas while you are reading the uh, the. Uh, uh, after that, after your topic, after finding an article like that, right? After deciding your uh, topic, uh, you decided that you need to make further research. Why you make the need to work? Uh, you need to uh, look for further articles because now you need to um, define each variable for me. For example, you uh, here you said layout accessibility in A. So you need to go to go back to article research, uh, search for layout accessibility. What kind of hypothesis exists in the literature? Okay, you need to find that. You need to sum for facility aesthetics, for seating comfort, for electronic equipment and this and their interaction with customer studies. So of this, you need to find new resources. This is why you need to make further article research. Reapply your article research, find more relevant articles. Uh, for example, maybe in your first article research, your search will come up with maybe thousands of articles, right? It will be very, very, because of a large topic. But while you narrow research results, will be more, maybe hundreds of articles. Maybe. Uh, also, for example, if you cannot files from web of science research you can look at the references of the, the good articles it's a good way to find further uh, references how come for example you read that article this example uh, article very much and, uh, but however you cannot find many articles in the web of science with the same similar topic and you couldn't find it i mean how can you Use that. You can look at the references for that article. Okay, what kind of references and go to references, read that articles and look up their references so that you can find additional. Articles. If it's an old article, you can uh, look up for the articles who cited this article. Okay, the new articles who cited this original article that you want, so that you can find additional parts. Am I clear about this? So. Then you can decide your topic. Mm -hmm.
then you can move on your literature. So uh, this is it. Uh, I hope it, it, is, it was helpful for you guys. Do you have any questions on, the, on this? Jam, can you share this video with us? Yes, yes. Uh, I will upload on YouTube. Uh, OK, thank you. OK. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm, I'm going to stop it. If you have questions, you can ask me.